Karibusana. Today we are discussing the current genocide that is happening and the title of this video is anti-semitism why it makes sense why anti-semitism makes sense um, this is a discussion that Baba Jahi and I talk a lot about and we thought it would be only right to bring this discussion to our people and to the masses for us to have a better understanding of what we're dealing with um, when we talk about genocide um, of our of our people and something that happens all around the world all the time by the same people right 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 yeah so this video um, we're gonna say a lot of things that um, I'm positive you've probably never heard before mm -hmm. but what's important to note is everything we do is very intentional um, we take a lot of time to study mm -hmm. and research and make sure also that our intuition is operating. That's right. Meaning we try, we don't say things unless it resonates with us on that deep spiritual level. Mm -hmm. Meaning if it's not true in that deep sense of the word, we're not gonna say it. So right. if you hear anything in this video that makes you feel uncomfortable, don't instantly just you know shut it down, but say, okay, why do I feel this way? Mm -hmm. And investigate um, the truth of what we're saying. Because we find that if you're an African person, meaning if you're a person who are, is proud of your African heritage, mm -hmm. you'll see um, why we're saying what we're saying. I share, I share. So, um, as of all videos, we like to begin with disclaimers, and the purpose of these disclaimers uh, is just to, you know, again, set the stage and, and, and set the tone mm -hmm. um, for what we're going to say afterwards, because um, this, again, gets us in that right mind frame right. To so that to accept and truth. receive, you know, the truth um, that we intend to communicate uh, to our brothers and sisters. So. The first uh, disclaimer that we want to point out is Israel does not exist, okay? Israel does not exist. No such thing as Israeli. No, no such, such thing. thing as Israel. A as Israel. Now, what does that mean? So, we have to understand words have power. And whenever we say a word, whether we're using a name, whether we're describing an individual, mm -hmm. or whether we're referring um, to a, a geographic location, there's a political and social energy energy attached to that word. Mm -hmm. So today, when we look at that region of the world and we call that territory Israel, we have to understand that that word is is erasing the history of the of the, of, of the native inhabitants of that land. Okay. And the native inhabitants of that land were called Palestinians. Mm -hmm. Okay, so whenever we say Israel, understand that's a rejection of that Palestinian identity. Okay. So within this video, if we say Israel, we're going to say so-called Israel. Mm -hmm or the so-called state of Israel, because whenever we say the word Israel, we're honoring something that's not worth honoring. Mm -hmm. We're honoring um, oppressors, and mm -hmm. we're honoring people by the name that they're mm -hmm. telling us to call them, right. as right. opposed to the name that history tells right. us to call Right, and this is something that we should normalize in other sense, um, situations as well, because we're gonna, as you're going to see in these notes, this is, a, this is a model that happens throughout the world. Mm. So our next disclaimer is this video is about defining anti-Semitism mm -hmm. from an African perspective. Right. Specifically, we're going to be using the perspective of Dr. Frances Cress Wilson. Mm -hmm. um, in her book, um, The Great Ancestor, mm -hmm. um, Dr. Frances Cress Wilson. Okay. Um, in her book, The ISIS Papers, she has a chapter on there. It's called The Holocaust Theory, mm -hmm. uh, um, the, the Cress Wilson Theory on the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. And in this chapter, she defines Semite. And what's different about um, Dr. Wilson's definition is, unlike um, most definitions which define Semitism as related to religion, mm -hmm. she defines it related to genetics. genetics. Um, essentially, she says the Semite is inter uh, inter inter interchangeable with the mulatto. Mm -hmm. Meaning a Semite is somebody Same who thing. is half black and half white. Mm -hmm. That's why you have semi, as in semi-diameter, semi mm -hmm. meaning half and half. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about Semitism, we're talking about genetics. Mm -hmm. We aren't talking about religion, mm -hmm. we're talking about genetics. genetics. So and when you acknowledge that genetic definition of Semitism, you come to very different conclusions mm -hmm. if you're just classifying it as a racial category. Right, okay? right. Yeah, so, so that's very important. When we talk about Semitism in this video, or anti-Semitism, we're essentially saying anti-race mixing. Right. Um, and the second part of the definition of Semitism that Dr. Wilson gave us was she said, Semitism is most pronounced in regions of the world where the African mother has it's been raped. raped. 
me, uh, she put the word sexually aggressed against mm -hmm. by know, the white male. By the white male. Mm -hmm. So whenever historically, whenever you have this situation where a white male is entering, mm -hmm. invading mm -hmm. a space that's populated with African mothers, mm -hmm. and the white man rapes that African woman. What you have is the production of Semitic populations. Mulatto okay. populations. Mulatto populations. Colored populations. Colored populations. We see this throughout the world. Yes. So all of that, when we're talking about anti-Semitism, mm -hmm. we're saying we're anti that rape. We're anti the invasion mm -hmm. of, of whites, mm -hmm. white males who are coming in and polluting the gene pool of African Intentionally people. Intentionally polluting the gene pool to create a Semitic group of people, a colored group of people, a racial um Confused, racially Ambiguity. confused, right? Yeah. Racially confused group of people as that buffer between the indigenous people, mm. right? Mm. This is a model, like we said, that happens throughout the world, and this is um, something that we have to condemn. And this is why anti Semitism it makes sense because it's anti rape. That's all we're saying. Mm -hmm. Anti Semitism means anti rape, and yes. pro Semitism means pro rape. And this is why the rapist is against anti-Semitism. Yes, and we're not saying necessarily, okay, if you're Semitic, meaning if you have a black mother mm -hmm. and a white father, mm -hmm. you're therefore equivalent to rape. What mm -hmm. we're saying is this is an identity that you should not be proud of. Meaning to the saying. extent you have white in your blood, you should be doing everything to you can to that. reject that, to purify your bloodline, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. make sure that your children and your children's children can what? Re revive that we African establish. element. Reestablish that African element within your bloodline. Ashe. So that's what we, the position we're arguing from. We're mm -hmm. arguing from the position that Semitism is a system of, of power mm -hmm. that whites are using against Africans to get to, us to disown our African heritage. And to justify rape. And to right? justify They're rape. justifying the rape by telling you that you can't claim anti-Semitism as something that's good. Yes. Because we're siding with the side of the rape it, the raper, the person who was raped and not the rapist. And yes. they want you to side with the rapist because the rapist is the one that's doing these settler colonialism mm -hmm. acts, raping, killing, destroying. Mm -hmm. This is all a cover for that. Yes. And what we're saying, let's unveil that. Anti-Semitism does not have anything to do with race. I mean, sorry, with, with religion. And mm -hmm. this is what they have told us for so long. Right, right. And we're siding with the, the victim of rape. Right. Not the rapist. Not the rapist. Yeah, rape. yeah the rape yeah. the victim of rape, right. not the rape. Mm -hmm. All right. So next, um, this video is to help us evolve from just saying free Palestine mm -hmm. and actively changing our lives so all oppressed populations can't achieve true sovereignty. Meaning we can't just adopt slogans mm -hmm. as a substitute for actual sacrifice in our right. lives, in our lives that right. are that's showing that not only do we support people or sympathize from afar. But we're making sacrifices, in sacrifices our in our lives to show we reject the same mm -hmm. oppressors mm -hmm. that are responsible for their, mm -hmm. you know, their um, plight, mm -hmm. responsible for the suffering that they're experiencing. Because right. if we're accepting their oppressors in our everyday life, but we're still saying free, free Palestine, Palestine is, then it comes off as insincere and disingenuous. Absolutely. So we want to be authentic in our advocacy, but we can only do that when we make the sacrifices in our lives mm -hmm. to show that we are. Uh, consistently mm -hmm. anti-colonial right. and not just anti-colonial when it's popular mm -hmm. or anti-colonial when it's you know convenient, convenient at when the it's time, a trend when it's a trend and this is also something that takes a lot of studying and understanding to really even address this topic because mm -hmm. it's so layered we have something in here I know it's talking about the compacted lie mm -hmm. meaning this situation and so many situations where you see whites mm -hmm. coming in and raping, killing, and destroying. There's so many layers of lies mm -hmm. that it's hard to really dis decipher through mm -hmm. what's true, what's not, who's the enemy, who is. So, it and with Baba Jahi, he's studied this mm -hmm. for years, even before him and I met. Mm -hmm. We want to talk more about that. Yes. Yeah, so this is a very, um, as Mama Jahi says, this um, topic of Israel Palestine um, is a topic that often creates a lot of discord and tension and to the point that people don't want to talk about it mm -hmm. and a lot of that is because one uh, the discourse is monopolized mm -hmm. by at least in western societies by jewish people mm -hmm. meaning if you turn on the news if you read the newspapers if you read in the magazines um a lot of this is from the israeli point of view um there's very few outlets at least unless you're a scholar within the american media mm -hmm. where you can get an honest Palestinian perspective. Right. Um, so um, while I was in my undergraduate study, I spent many years writing articles. I have published work 
Um, I can, I, if you DM us, I can send you some of the articles that I've written. I can send you um, some of the blog posts that I've written mm -hmm. um, dealing ex uh, specifically with the genocide against Palestinians. And I think in this video, what we have to understand is as African people, what's happening to the Palestinians has to resonate with us yes. because what's happening in that region of the world, this is colonialism. Mm -hmm. This is the same type of colonialism that African people suffered under when they went, was dealing with, say, the British in Kenya, mm -hmm. or they was dealing with the Portuguese in Mozambique, mm -hmm. or the apartheid government in South Africa, mm -hmm. or we're talking about, the you know, Biafra. the Biafran War. Mm -hmm. So all of these, um, um, which is happening in the post-colonial era, mm -hmm. but um, whenever we're talking about colonialism, understand that even if Africans aren't directly implicated, mm -hmm. there's always an African element. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're doing in this video. We're trying to bring out that African element mm -hmm. and, and show how this is relevant to us. Mm -hmm. All right. So and um, another disclaimer is that this video is a rejection of the false solutions that require us to engage with murderers. Mm -hmm. And by murderers, I mean every elected official in America, right. senators, congressmen, presidents. presidents, vice presidents, all of these people within the American political culture mm -hmm. are mass murderers. Mm -hmm. So no solution to this problem is going to be achieved by appealing to people no. who are benefiting from the genocide. No. And this is across the political spectrum. Mm -hmm. This means Democrat, Democrat Republican, Republican, and everything liberal, in between. Liberal, progressive, all of, all of this, because they're actively giving material mm -hmm. aid to a terrorist state which is Israel, mm -hmm. and America is the bigger terrorist state. Right. Israel is the junior terrorist state. Israel and America okay? are the same. They're the same, and sometimes you'll hear us say America, and just think of it as the same thing. Right. America, America and Israel, Israel are, the same are, thing. are the same thing. You can't try to separate them. So, um, so this video is a rejection of the false solutions that require us to engage with murderers. Mm -hmm. I think it makes sense to say that this is, quote, none of our business. If you live in America, you must understand America's only business is killing Genocide. melanated people worldwide. Meaning from the foundations of America when they was killing the indigenous nations. It's a documentary called 500 Nations. Mm -hmm. There's killing all these indigenous nations within the American mainland. Yes. This was them setting the tone, not only for what they wanted within their borders, but what they wanted worldwide. worldwide. So when, they look, when yes. America looks at Israel, there's a, a, a kinship, yes. a kinship of ideas. There's a reverence. There's a reverence a because what Israel is doing today is exactly what America did when they came um, into the indigenous territory of North mm -hmm. America and massacred all mm -hmm. the indigenous um, nations there. Okay. So we have to, again, make those historical connections. And again, that'll bring it to the present mm -hmm. so that we can appreciate what's happening um, today. Right. All right. So now we're going to jump into the topic, which is, oh, genocide. So in the title, genocide. we have to define genocide. Okay, that's important. We have to use our own definitions because if we don't use our own definitions, we're going to come, with the wrong, come away with the wrong conclusions. So genocide. Genocide is the purposeful annihilation of a race of people through violence, rape, and the incarc and incarceration are enforcing torturous living conditions that will lead to their eventual extinction. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, when we use that definition, that would include slavery, right. or what we call the ma'afa, mm -hmm. in, the, in the, you know, the middle, what they call the middle passage, mm -hmm. the kidnapping of people, the stealing of land, Genocide. the raping of resources, the raping of land, the raping of the women, the mass uh, imprisonment of, of, of men, women, and children. The, the child trafficking. The child trafficking. The sex trafficking. All this falls under the umbrella of genocide. genocide. So when we're talking about genocide, um, understand this is a phenomenon that has affected melanated people um, from the time that white people exited the caves. Yes. And this has always been their agenda. How do they create an environment where we are no longer a genetic threat to mm -hmm. them? Because they have the genetic anxiety. Yes. We talk about that all the time. Genetic anxiety of white people compels them mm -hmm. to commit genocide in any indigenous place that they enter. Yes. This is not even about if they want to or not. Yes. They are compelled to do this. Yes, and even within Israel, within yes. so-called so Israel, Israel, the so-called state, so state of Israel, um, there's a rhetoric around what they call the demographic problem. Mm -hmm. or sometimes they'll call it a demographic bomb, mm -hmm. which means there's too many brown people in a Jewish state. Mm -hmm. There's too many Palestinians in a Jewish state. Okay, this type of um, um, language, this type of rhetoric is designed to create an atmosphere for genocide, saying we're going to kill these people 
not because they present an actual threat to us, but we're going to, meaning in the military sense, mm -hmm. we're going to kill them because genetically, genetically they're you know, a threat. They are a threat. And, mm -hmm. and this is why, um, again, America backs Israel so intensely is because they identify with that sentiment. They identify with that goal mm -hmm. of annihilating people of melanated, um, um, right. of melanated um, character, right. or melanated descent. descent. And then we yeah. have to start also, we can't separate America from Israel. No. We cannot do that. No. That is one of the biggest things that I see happening. Yeah. It, the so-called state of Israel and talking about America separately. Like, why are we giving them weapons? It's like, these are mm -hmm. the same people. Right, right. These are the same people. Mm -hmm. There's no different. They're just in different geographic locations. So what is anti-Semitism? So anti-Semitism is about justifying rape mm -hmm. and then intermarriage. Mm -hmm. So we talked about the origins of anti-Semitism. This right. is, and this happened, by the way, throughout the world. Mm -hmm. It's not just happening, say, when we're talking about Israel, Palestine. Right. So think about like the indigenous people of India, mm -hmm. okay, where the Aryans came in mm -hmm. and raped the African, mm -hmm. the Ethiopian mm -hmm. Indians, and then turned them into the, the what they call the Brahmins. Mm -hmm. And so now you have a caste system of India. Caste system. India. Mm -hmm. Or think about like places like Brazil, where mm -hmm. you had Angolans, mm -hmm. who was raped by Portuguese. Mm -hmm. And now you and call them Bra Brazilians. And, and now you call them Brazilians. You, you create this mulatto class. Mm -hmm. Or think about places like Haiti, mm -hmm. where you create a Creole population. Mm -hmm. You take the indigenous people, mm -hmm. you either exterminate them or mm -hmm. rape them, and you create another population. Mm -hmm. So this process of rape, in this, order to create a new class. This is the model. This is the model for in, for Semitism. Mm -hmm. Semitism as a political weapon yes. against indigenous people. Exactly. Okay? And then after a certain certain amount of generations, maybe three or four generations, now you start getting the product of those of those people that were raped. Their children start to grow up and they marry outside their race willfully, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But that's always the goal. The goal is genocide. I mean, sorry, rape the mother. Mm -hmm. And then now that the child is an adult, now the child is willing to marry outside his race and you have achieved your goal, which is creating this Semitic, this mulatto, this colored class mm -hmm. buffer system. And what we're saying is that is a weak position to have because um, Semitic populations don't have mm -hmm. land. They don't have culture. They're always in search mm -hmm. for land, which is why these so-called is Israel lights, not Israelites. Um, Israelis, <laughs> Israelis. Mm -hmm. the so-called Israelis are constantly mm -hmm. in search of land because mm -hmm. they're Semitic. Yes, so Semitic culture forces those to, um, who inhabit the land to abuse the land. Mm -hmm. and this is why you see in Israel, what are they doing? They are taking all the water resources. Yep. They're taking all the land, the yep. arable land, mm -hmm. and then they're pushing the Palestinians onto the onto land the that is barren. barren. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is a part of that Semitic political yes. assault yes. and then the indigenous culture we revere the land mm -hmm. meaning we revere the land to the point that in traditional african societies it was taboo to sell land mm -hmm. meaning the land belonged to everybody mm -hmm. and you were supposed to be a steward of the land mm -hmm. meaning you give back what you take mm -hmm. you don't pollute the waters mm -hmm. you when don't you cut, pollute the air when you cut down a tree you pray before you mm -hmm. cut down a tree you repair and then you replenish yes. you know what you have taken mm -hmm. you see so this is there's uh, no reverence for that this is an indigenous relationship with mm -hmm. land mm -hmm. within um israel our so-called Israeli, the Semitic culture, they don't have this same no. reverence for land. No. They look at land as a commodity, mm -hmm. land as something to consume, mm -hmm. and then after they consume to it. To extract resources, yes, to, to mine yes, deep into the yes, earth and extract yes, the resources and yes, then sell them off. Yes, so that's, that's again, that's the Semitic aspect. The, the psychological relationship they have with land is one of an abuser mm -hmm. to an a abuser, rapist. To, of a rapist. They right? rape the land just like they rape the women and, and the children. Next, um, uh, genetically, uh, sem Semitic culture uh, produces, um, let me see, where am I? Indigenous culture reveres the land. Semitic culture is constantly in search of land. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we mentioned that already. So when you create, when a, when a rapist comes in and rapes to the point where there's a whole group of people, now these people have this sense of un... They don't feel connected to anything because mm -hmm. they have the rapist blood and then they have the indigenous blood. So mm -hmm. now they have this they have this schizophrenic almost identity mm -hmm. and this compels them to be always be in search mm -hmm. of something to call their own. Mm -hmm. And this is why you see them constantly moving around. They're, they're, mm -hmm. not, they're not sedentary. Mm -hmm. Indigenous people are sedentary mm -hmm. versus when you have Semitic people, they're always in search, mm -hmm. especially when you have white Semitic people mm -hmm. like the Kikes, the, 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 the so-called Jews. Now they have feel like, okay, now I'm about to just take 
Now I'm about to come in and I'm going to set up shop in these people's land. And I'm going to genocide them through the process so that I can have a place to call my own. So the question becomes, why do whites demonize anti-Semitism? Mm -hmm. Because remember, anti-Semitism, this is something that's, it's like, you know, the worst thing, apparently, you can call somebody in the <laughs> West. But understand, the reason why whites demonize anti-Semitism is because they do not want to be held accountable mm -hmm. for the rape that we're talking about. Because mm -hmm. think about it. Remember, the origins of the Semite is the African woman mm -hmm. being raped by the white man. Mm -hmm. When the African, say, for example, people like Kyrie Irving, when the, when the black person, when the melanated person mm -hmm. starts to speak on, on, on what a Semite is, the How melanated person starts to speak on the people who are now claiming the identity of the Semite, mm -hmm. meaning the whites. Mm -hmm. That's equivalent to the abused victim, the raped person. Saying speaking. you raped me. That's the African mother speaking. Mm -hmm. And part of the Semitic political agenda is to keep silent. the African mother silent. Absolutely. To keep that origin mm -hmm. of rape under, under the, table. the radar, under the table, mm -hmm. so that they can continue to what? To monopolize on all of their mental, mm -hmm. emotional, mm -hmm. and political energy. Ashe. Okay, so we have to understand, and this is this, I think we can say this about any word or mm -hmm. any concept within Western society. If white people are saying you if shouldn't do it, you, you should, should do it. Meaning if white people are calling someone a terrorist, you they're should support not, them. Not if white people are calling you anti-Semitic, you should support them. Mm -hmm. If white people are saying this person is a, a hater, this mm -hmm. person is somebody hate speech. Is, is engaging in hate speech, this person is a threat to mm -hmm. America, you should support, support them. Because everything that America represents is a threat to African people. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't identify as African, then whatever. This is not applied to you. But if you identify as an African, you cannot afford to follow and to structure what you say and what you think mm -hmm. based on what white people, what your enemy, what mm -hmm. your rugu mm -hmm. says is bad. Mm -hmm. No, we say what we say based on what African elders say. Mm -hmm. And in Kiswahili, there is no real outrage over anti-Semitism. No. You see? Because within African cultures, what it's about, it's about the maintenance mm -hmm. of the whole. It's mm -hmm. the maintenance of the African nation. Mm -hmm. Not the American nation. No. Not any Western nation. No. no. Maintaining African nations. Right, right. So we have to start organizing our ourselves in a way that we aren't deterred mm -hmm. or intimidated mm -hmm. by what other people say right. is moral and immoral. Absolutely. They have no legs to stand Absolutely on when none. it comes Anything, to morality. Exactly. Right? No morality. And we have to also remember that indigenousness is anti-Semitism yes. because the indigenous person has not been raped. Mm. So when we, when we say we're indigenous, we this, we're that, we're indigenous, when we are, mm. but the indigenous in, embedded in that means that you are anti-semitic you don't want to be mm. race mix you mm. see mm. so we can't say these terms about indigenousness but then also say i'm not i'm um not anti-semitic it's mm. like you can't be both you right. see if you value your genes if you value who you are and your culture and you mm. see reverence and respect in that you're anti-semitic exactly no race mixing yes do not dilute my genes yes. you see yes. but if you if you're on the fence then now that sounds like that's an invitation mm -hmm. to be to be uh, co-opted, mm -hmm. to be destroyed, mm -hmm. to be taken over, mm -hmm. and you lose your sovereignty. Exactly, and yeah. we cannot be afraid. Yeah. This is the thing: we cannot be afraid of one speaking truth, but doing and saying things that are going against the grain. Mm -hmm. Right? We cannot be afraid of that. That's part of that's that's in our DNA. We're not afraid. We're not a fearful people. That was something that was embedded in us by being in the proximity to white people, and a lot of this. A lot of these conclusions that we as black people in the West are coming to is simply because we're in proximity to them. Mm -hmm. In being in proximity to them literally changes how we compute things. Mm -hmm. We can't compute and we can't dissect and we can't really understand things in the same way when we have to see them mm -hmm. at the gym. Yeah. When we have to see them at the grocery store. When you have to see them while you're driving. Mm -hmm. Like that co ops you are automatically. It normalizes their presence. It normal. It, yeah. yeah. And, it, and it makes you forget that you're genetically dominant. It makes you and forget. you're the numerical majority in the world. In the world. You see, so remember a lot of the anxiety that you see in the mm -hmm. so called state of Israel is mm -hmm. because numerically There's when they compare to the Arabs is small. Mm -hmm. So you can see in mic in a microcosm mm -hmm. what white genetic anxiety is about mm -hmm. if you understand Israel. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to transition to the history of right. this so-called state called Israel. Mm -hmm. And I want to preface it with this statement. And that's understanding the logic and history of Israeli propaganda is key to get into the truth about the genocide in Palestine. The truth is buried deep because it is beneath 
decades, and I would even say over a century oh, mm -hmm. of impacted lives. Mm -hmm. All right, now, so at, in the disclaimer, I mentioned how I've spent many years, at least 10 plus years, I think I started studying this topic around 2008. So it's a lot of things that I could say, but what I'm gonna give here is a condensed version of the history of Israel. Basically, so the so-called state of Israel, mm -hmm. really Palestine, mm -hmm. and how it got to where it is today. So the story begins with, I think, Zionism. Okay, what is Zionism? So Zionism is a political movement headed by a Jew, a European Jew, what they call Ashkenazi Jews, by the name of Theodore Herzl. Last name H-E-R-Z-L. Theodore Herzl. Theodore Herzl, he was of the view that it, the Jewish people needed a homeland of their own. And here's the interesting thing about that. Before they decided on Palestine, they was looking at Uganda. Yep. There's nothing in the Bible that says Uganda is the promised land. So it sounds like the promised land is whatever land they think has the most resources Absolutely. and not the land that God promised the them. The most fertile land, that's where they was trying to go. Okay, so Theodore <laughs> Herzl, he's the leader of the, you know, the Zionist League or the Zionist Party, whatever you want to call it. And he decides on Palestine. So this is the early 1900s. In the early 1900s, this was a time when Palestine was first occupied by the Ottomans. Mm. These are people from Turkey. Mm -hmm. Britain then went to war with the Ottomans. This is the First World War. Mm -hmm. At the end of the First World War, Britain then took possession of that territory, mm -hmm. what, what is actually Palestine. Mm -hmm. and they call it the mandate, the, the, the protectorate, the mandate of Palestine. Jewish people by this point was living in this territory. And as they was living in this territory the, under the British colonizers, they was looking at this land and saying, this can be our home. Yes, and this was before. This is before, before the, the Holocaust. Holocaust. Holocaust doesn't happen to the 1940s. Yes. Okay, so this is long before the Holocaust mm -hmm. and Hitler and all of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, because mm -hmm. remember, in the mythology, they like to connect the founding of Israel as compensation for the Holocaust. No. But this is long before the Holocaust. Right. This is like 1910, 1906, mm -hmm. 19, 1916. Mm -hmm. Okay. Early 20th century, the Jews, again, the British are controlling this um, territory, call it Mandate of Palestine. Um, British are controlling it, Jews live in the territory. The Jews develop an agency, they call it the Jewish Agency, okay? This agency was designed to basically steal land from the Arabs who was living in Palestine, okay? Basically, a game, a game, yeah, a game. A game. And in fact, they had two games. And this is something else you can write down. One of the gangs was called the Stern Gang, mm -hmm. S-T-E-R-N. The other gang was called Ergun, I-R-G-U-N. And these were terrorist organizations. Literally, literal ter terrorists. If you Wikipedia both of these um, organizations, <laughs> they define themselves as terrorists. And their official platform was, we must use violence to create the Jewish state. Mm -hmm. Meaning that was, yeah. that was the only way in which they felt it was possible. Mm -hmm. Because what happened was in 1917, the British said, they issued what was called the Balfour Declaration, which is basically saying, we're gonna give this land to you. Because mm -hmm. at this point, British, they knew they was gonna lose their territory. So it was like, we'll give it you know, to the Jewish people. The, the Jewish people was impatient. They didn't wanna wait. It was like, we don't wanna wait, we want it now. Mm -hmm. So instead of waiting for the British to hand Palestine to them, they started to blow up people, to kill people. Look up the bombing of the King David Hotel. This happened in 1946. Or look up the Deir Yassin Massacre, where they killed over 160 Palestinians. These are people that Civilians. think this land is holy, by the way. They think the land is holy, but they're okay with dropping bombs. By the way, the, the people who was a part of this, this gang, this terrorist organization, were the founders of Israel. People like Menachem Begin. David Ben-Gurion, Golda Meir, mm -hmm. Moshe Dayan, these are the founders of Israel, and they led this terrorist organization. And then in 1948... That sounds very familiar to America, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, just like George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, you see the Benjamin Franklin, you see the terrorists? Mm -hmm. The terrorists, they like to kill indigenous people. And then call over, them terrorists. And then call them terrorists. Because, by the way, while they were killing all these Palestinians, terroristically, they was pretending like this was their land that God gave them. Yeah. Just like Thomas Jefferson said, hmm. America was the land that God gave them. Interesting. So you see the parallels. Huh. You have savages in the 1700s murdering indigenous people, and you got savages in the 1940s mm -hmm. murdering indigenous people. Claiming victimhood while doing it. Okay, so now you have this buildup. You have these terrorist organizations. You have Ergun, Stern Gang. They're killing the Palestinians. What happens in 1948? 
1948, that marks the foundation of the state of Israel, okay? The so-called. The so-called uh, uh, state of Israel. Mm -hmm. And they define it as a Jewish state, mm -hmm. meaning this is a state only, only for, for Jews. Jews. Yep. An apartheid state. Mm -hmm. A state where if you're Muslim or you're Christian mm -hmm. or you're any other religion, then the religion of what they call the chosen people, mm -hmm. you're not allowed into this territory, mm -hmm. okay? So that's, that's just a, a background on the foundation of Israel. So what happens after 1948? After 1948, you have this expansion of the what was they was doing before mm -hmm. the state was founded, mm -hmm. meaning the theft of land, mm -hmm. meaning Continue. they're terrorizing the, the, the Arabs. They're running them off the land. Mm -hmm. They used to call them felayim. Mm -hmm. These was like Arabs who were just farmers yeah. running them Spelling off the them. land. Because here's an important part you have to know. Before the, the, the so-called Jews came into Palestine, when the Arabs were there, they had a concept of land ownership that was just like in Africa. Mm -hmm. Meaning the land wasn't to be bought and sold. Mm -hmm. It belonged it to everybody. Right. But when the Jewish agency came in, they, they was, again, they were students of British colonialism. Mm -hmm. While the British was colonizing, they was learning from them. Right. And one of the things they learned from the British is that land is a commodity. Mm -hmm. And land is something you steal. Mm -hmm. So they started to steal the land from under the feet of the Arabs, mm -hmm. just like the British did. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And they did this all the way up until 1967. Mm -hmm. What happened in 1967? They ran they destroyed what's called east jerusalem mm -hmm. and then they took possession of the west bank and gaza mm -hmm. and that's why those were called occupied territories that west bank gaza divide you see today this was created in 1967 when israel launched an aggressive war mm -hmm. against the the indigenous palestinian population mm -hmm. in that territory mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay and, and Go and ahead. by the way, these are these are white people, European right. people coming from right. Scandinavia, right. Poland, Russia, uh, Russia, Lithuania, Amer Latvia, New York, yeah. coming from New York, Brooklyn, Brooklyn, yeah. <laughs> and set and setting up shop yeah. with their Yankees hats. <laughs> okay, Co telling people that they should be thankful that they're there. There's a video of a man from New York telling this Palestinian woman that he sh she should be thankful mm -hmm. that he's. Um, squatting mm. in her home. Mm. Mm. So this mm -hmm. is what 1967. That's when the the occupation begins. Mm -hmm. Then you have basically, included in this occupation, by the way, is imprisonment, is kidnapping. In 1973, Israel literally wrote a law that legalized it for them to kidnap Arabs in any nation of their choice and then imprison them in Israeli prisons. So Israelis, they would send so-called Israelis, kikes. They would send their soldiers mm -hmm. into Syria. They would send their soldiers into Egypt and they would assassinate people. They would kidnap people and take them into their prisons. So what happens when you take a nation that has been occupied and you start taking their leaders, you start taking their revolutionaries and throwing them into prison? What you're going to do is you're going to create, create. A, a, mm -hmm. a reservoir of mm -hmm. hatred. Mm -hmm. You're going to create a reservoir of righteous indignation. Rice really and so. that happened with the Palestinians. Mm -hmm. And what did they do in response to this? Well, there was an event in 1972, I believe, during the Olympics. It was called the Munich Olympics. And this is going to, I'm going to connect this to what happened on um, today or most recently. In the Munich Olympics, Palestinians kidnapped a few Israeli athletes. This is during the Olympics. And the reason they kidnapped mm -hmm. these Israeli athletes is because they said, we want Israel to release the Palestinians who are held in prison, mm -hmm. in Israeli prisons, mm -hmm. unjustifiably, mm -hmm. they didn't. meaning who were kidnapped. Now, <laughs> and this was in Germany. This is where the Olympics were. The Israeli government, they could have easily mm -hmm. made the exchange. Yeah, no. But there's a principle within the Israeli Culture, What's the principle? The political about? culture, and that uh, uh, principle is that a hostage who is um, alive is embarrassing because that's a liability. That's showing that the state didn't secure their citizens, but a dead hostage is worth more than gold because they can actually use that as a reason. Uh, yes, a dead hostage mm. for the Israelis, meaning if you kidnap an Israeli, they want the hostage to be killed. Yes. Why do they want the hostage to be killed? They can because if they kill the hostage, now I have a justification mm -hmm. to do what? Mm -hmm. Mow the lawn, as mm -hmm. they put it. Mm -hmm. And by mowing the lawn, they mean murdering men, women, and children. By the way, if you want to look, know the demographics of Gaza, more than half the population is children. More than half the population of Gaza is children. So when you see these so-called brave IDF soldiers who are actually terrorists, Equipped by children. the American government, they're murdering children. The American government murders children. 
the Israeli so-called Israeli government murders children and they have no problem with it because that's the same thing they did when they founded America. And They're doing the exact same thing today. That's the same thing they was doing in the ice too. Same thing in the ice. So again, this is what happened in Munich. We don't want to free the Israeli hostages. Mm -hmm. We rather kill them mm -hmm. so we have a justification. Mm -hmm. And then what happened after the, the so-called Israeli hostages got killed? Israel started bombing Syria and Lebanon. Started bombing other countries on its borders because why? Because we can. Because America, the biggest gangster in the world, gave us weapons and we're going to use them yeah. against melanated people. Because yeah. that's the only thing Worldwide. American weapons are for, by yes. the way. American weapons are only for people with melanin. They're not for white people. So they, America gave Israel weapons mm -hmm. and they used them mm -hmm. in the way America wanted Want them, Amer to use. them to use Because they're the same people. They're the same people. Fast forward, 1982, they invade Lebanon. This is the war against Lebanon. They, they, you have what's called the Sabra Shatila massacre, where they murder Palestinian refugees in a refugee camp. We ain't even get to the, we ain't get we ain't close even, to the we, point. I'm still in the 80s, so I done described all these massacres. I ain't even get to the 2000s yet. Meanwhile, Christians are supporting this throughout this whole time, right? <laughs> Christian, Christians love They're taking Israel. holy land They're taking holy land tours. Yeah. They love, so, so Christians are terrorists. Exactly. Sadists, terrorists. Terrorists. The supporter <laughs> of rape. Okay, just wanted to remind y'all that Christians and Christianity supports everything mm. that has happened in Israel mm -hmm. and is happening and will, and will continue to support. 1982, you got invasion of Lebanon. 1987, you got the Intifada. That's the resistance, the rebellion mm -hmm. of the Palestinians, mm -hmm. meaning we tired of this. We, we throwing off these oppressors. Mm -hmm. Israel puts down the Intifada by force. Mm -hmm. Gets quiet for a while. Then another terrorist gets elected named Bill Clinton. And under Bill Clinton... Mm -hmm. Settlements. Mm -hmm. What are settlements? Settlements is just squatters. Basically Jews from Brooklyn coming, coming to in, Israel and just taking the taking land, land. Telling the Palestinians to get out of here, mm -hmm. you dirty Arab. Get out of here. Mm -hmm. That's what they're saying. That's and they Bill mean. Terrorist Clinton yep. is supporting this. They literally he, were moving just, to their homes. Moving into their homes, like like cutting down their olive groves, you know, meaning their trees, which is a, a key Sacred. source of commerce, a part of their, you know, agriculture, cutting down their olive groves. And so settlements expand, builds, a, uh, and then at the end of that, then you get Bush. What happens under Bush? Another terrorist. Another terrorist. He's also supporting Israel, and during his presidency, they build a wall, what they call the annexation wall. And the purpose of this wall is to what to isolate the Palestinians from the land that's theirs, so that Israel can take more, and not just take the land, but the water as well, mm. because they want to take the water production to the. And now it's so bad in Palestine. They don't even have. The people water. don't have drinkable water. Because they don't have the technology to get the salt out the water. They don't, they, they call it desalination. They can't desalinate the water because all the good water is being used by, by Israelis, the by the kikes, to do slip and slide and wash their cars. You see, and wash the blood off their hands, which I'm sure is just dripping Drip, all over the place right now. And it's not just dripping off the Israelis' hands, because I keep saying Israeli, American hands, including Barack Obama. Absolutely. Another, Another terrorist. terrorist. Another terrorist. Him and his wife. And this is where it got really bad. This is when I actually start studying it. Mm. You see, when Obama was in office, this Obama, the level of terrorism that Listen, happened during the Obama it administration. It up even more would, than, than um, Bush, right? Yes, more than Bush. So this, this, is, this is the level of terrorism that happened under the Obama administration. Not only did you have massive massacres like Operation Cast Lead, Operation Protective Edge, Operation Pillar of Defense. One of the massacres was so bad that the UN did a study on it and they called it infanticide. Mm -hmm. And you know what Obama said about that? Israel has a right to protect itself. You see, they say the Israel, same thing. And, and what was happening in America while he was saying Israel has a right to protect itself? My president is black, my Lambo blue. <laughs> while he murdering Palestinian children. No. He murdering Palestinian children. When he was coming into office, there was a massive attack on Gaza. And, they, and he was asked by a reporter, they said, what do you have to say about the um, massacres in Gaza? This was 2008, before he was inaugurated. He mm. said, there's only one president right now, so I'm not going to comment on it. Basically passing it to Bush. Then when he got to office, not only did he continue to support settlements, not only did he continue to support the torture of the Palestinians in Gaza, he also financed their missile defense system mm. called Iron Dome, where they can knock the rockets out the air because you know Obama, he hates 
militant armed resistance against colonialism mm -hmm. because he has a white mama. Mm -hmm. He's a semi. He's a semi. His and his own. white mama transmitted to him this idea that mm -hmm. when African melanated people mm -hmm. want to throw off their oppressors, you put them, you down. Put them down. Just I like he probably would have put down the Mau Mau mm -hmm. who acted just like Hamas is mm -hmm. acting today. Mm -hmm. You see? He so sided with the rapists. He sided with the rapists. He sided with the oppressors. Yep. Okay? He, and, not, and then he promised Israel $3 billion per year. Every year, $3 billion in weapon sales. It's now four billion under Joe Biden. Okay, so the, the support is just going the, up. Yeah, every president is just every more president. support. When when Donald Trump came to office, and I know nobody was paying attention because they was too busy paying attention to all this Russia stuff, he tried to make Jerusalem the capital of Israel, which is again giving a nod to the biblical insanity of it these mass murderers. Insanity. You know that this is somehow promised to them in the Bible, using the Bible to justify rape, okay, pillaging, and theft. So now I went through it. Now we up to today. So why all this history? Notice in all this history, what are the Palestinians doing here? At Playing most, a victim. Each one of these massacres, by the way, I described the death count. This is the typical mm. death count. It'll be like 1,400 Palestinians, six Israelis. 2,000 Palestinians, 12 Israelis. So-called. So-called Israelis. 3,000 Palestinians, 11 so-called Israelis. Mm. Now in 2023, you have a bunch of so-called Israelis mm. partying, partying on the land, on the land that, that they, they stole. stole. Hamas, which is the most popular, mm -hmm. you know, the most, you know, well-known that was elected militant by the, group, Palestinian by the Palestinians. People. And we're going to touch on this too. Mm -hmm. We have to revise how we think of Hamas, mm -hmm. the, the group that the Palestinians elected. They go over the blockade that was imposed, by the way, in 2005. They go over the blockade and start massacring these people, killing them, shooting them. Men, women, children, all of them, shooting them. Now, if you don't know that history, what you going to say about this? Oh, my goodness, I condemn Hamas. They're terrorists. They're terrorists. Did you see what they did to us? But I just gave you a whole history of just one-sided mass murder. But Hamas goes over the gate and allegedly, because we still don't know the, uh, the full effects, allegedly kills about 600 Israelis. And now this is the worst killing since the Holocaust. This is the second 9-11. This is like uh, every, everything you could think of. And, I, and this is why I was described Americans, they suffer from collective autism. Mm. Meaning in the same way when 9-11 happened, they was looking at it like, why would they might do this? Mm. Because you don't study, you don't read, and you're morally imbecilic. You have no moral bone in your body. You see people being killed all the time, and it's okay. But the minute the person who's being oppressed strikes back, now, it's, now a it's a crisis. Now it's a problem. Now it's a crisis. And this is why black people in America have to divorce themselves from America. Yes. And they have to say, when so-called Israel does this, that's America doing this. Yes. This is not it's it's American, American crimes. crimes. And if you live in... <laughs> and these are American crimes right. because again, all the weapons are coming from America. Mm. The bombs, the planes, the tanks, mm. the surveillance, mm. the assassinations. Mm. America was assassinating Iranian nuclear scientists because <laughs> they thought they was building nuclear weapons. We're not even for sure. But not even for sure. But we can make a movie about Oppenheimer. Yeah. Oppenheimer didn't get shot let's, while he was building a nuclear weapon. But y'all can kill Iranian nuclear scientists. And let's Got talk it. about Oppenheimer, a so-called Jew. Yeah. Creating a whole nuclear weapon. Yes. Dropped it, not knowing if it was gonna destroy the whole earth. But but the Palestinians are the terrorists. Yes. This yes. these people are genocidal by nature. Mm. They're they're the most sadistic people you will ever, ever know. All white people. Mm. All of them. Mm. Mm. So so when we're looking at the attack that Hamas did. Why, why the history? So one thing, of, again, this is an aspect of the history of Israeli propaganda, the logic of Israel propaganda. They have a tendency, they have a habit, a pattern mm -hmm. of staging attacks mm -hmm. just for political just, gain. Yeah. So there's been reports, and you can find them online, mm -hmm. that Egypt gave Israel intelligence that this attack was going to happen mm -hmm. before it happened. Mm -hmm. And what did Israel do? They Let ignored it. it. Just like George Bush ignored. Mm -hmm. You see you see the similarities. It's like they're twins, right? Just like George Bush ignored the warnings that 9-11 was going to happen. Mm -hmm. So in a way, they were right. It kind of is like a 9-11 because both of them show how the leadership of these nations are terrorists. Yes. And savage, 
beasts mm -hmm. who deserve to be put on trial and executed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're similar in that way. Mm -hmm. So yes, so Israel knew about it. They just ignored it, mm -hmm. let it happen, and now what's happening? They're getting their dividends. Yes. They're, they're capitalizing on the fact that they just suffered this attack that they probably staged they most definitely likely, staged. that they definitely staged they definitely and now staged it. you hear reports about up to maybe 4,000 Palestinians are dying they have, lineages, they have no, lineages killing entire out. families in one day have nowhere to run have no food, have no electricity, have no water and what do we hear? and they still say that they're being attacked and they still say they're being attacked they're still saying they're defending themselves even though we the have people, the right to defend. Even though the people they're attacking don't have an air force, don't have a navy, don't have, you know, any type an of intelligence. military intelligence system. Mm -mm. They don't have any of that. All they have is rocks and rockets. And willpower and, and spirit. And willpower and spirit. Okay? So, again, understand whenever we talk about Israel-Palestine and we just leapfrog over that whole history mm -hmm. that I just gave, you're participating in a culture of collective autism, mm -hmm. you can participate in a culture of immorality mm -hmm. and savagery, mm -hmm. and you are the terrorists, mm -hmm. not the Palestinians. Mm -hmm. It's terrorism to ignore history mm -hmm. just because it's politically beneficial for you to do mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. That's terrorism. Mm -hmm. That's terrorism on a level that Palestinians could never approach right, right. because they don't have the propaganda system to do it. Mm -hmm. People who are terrorists, they have propaganda systems. Mm -hmm. People who are terrorists, they don't, you know, they don't live for many decades mm -hmm. under siege. Mm -hmm. they, they don't they live in air conditioned offices mm -hmm. and they like, you know, singers like Beyonce mm -hmm. and Jennifer Lopez and Doja and they, Cat and Doja Cat and, Drake. and then they bomb children. That's what terrorists do. Yep. So if we want to know who terrorists are, how about we ask the people who are actual victims of terrorism mm -hmm. and not the people who are committing, who are committing the, the terror. Worldwide, by the way, because this is just one example. They do this everywhere. So, Everywhere there's in melanated indigenous people, this happens. Pearl Harbor is another example. Yes. Staged. They knew it was going to happen. They knew it was going to happen. They let they it happen it. because why not? This is politically beneficial. We can use this as let a reason happen. to drop the bomb on men, women, children, and babies. And we not even, we didn't even mention Pearl Harbor. I no. mean, we didn't even mention um, when they dropped the bomb on the Japanese. Two, t two bombs. Two bombs. Yeah. And but the, second but one the Hamas just because, are the terrorists. Yes, yes. How do you how do you even fix your Man. mouth to utter the word terrorism if you if not you, only developed but used an atomic weapon? You actually used it. And think about how disciplined, think mm. about how docile the American population is that they allow their government to utter phrases like terrorism and they don't die of laughter. How? 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 How can you find a bigger terrorist in America? Ain't how? No terrorist. Show me a bigger terrorist in America. Where? Please show me. Show me. Show me over a consistent record of time. Show me a nation that has murdered as many innocent people as the American government. I can't find one. Not in this universe. So we shouldn't accept them when they say terrorism. And no, when we say that's American like Jeffrey movie. Dahmer talking about cannibalism. Right. right. I don't want to hear you it. You eat people. You eat bruh. people. Like what? And, so, and, so and we talking about white people. Up. Right. We talking about all white people too. When we say America, all of them. So this is another point about Israel. So we had the Israeli-Palestine relation. Historically, Israel has opposed African liberation in Biafra mm -hmm. and South Africa. Mm -hmm. and that's just two examples. Just I could two, also yeah. mention Angola, but mm -hmm. time. Right. Right. <laughs> right. So in Biafra, what do you have? You have the Republic of Biafra. This is an Igbo nation mm -hmm. in South, southern Nigeria. Then you have the Nigerian government. There was a, they say it's a genocide, and it was. It was millions of people killed. Mm -hmm. But what they don't say is that Israel, and this is a report that came out this year, I think it came out last month, Israel was funding both sides, meaning they was giving weapons to the Nigerian military and they was giving weapons to the Biafrans and they was allowing them to murder each other because it was consistent with their business interests. And this is all in declassified documents, mm -hmm. yep. you see? So again, how they capitalize on the destruction of Africans. This is another reason why when we see Israel get so hit, we should be applauding. Mm -hmm. When we I see Israel hit, facing its destruction, we should be applauding because mm -hmm. we're Africans. Mm -hmm. We're not Yorugu. Mm -hmm. And only Yorugu support Israel. Mm -hmm. Africans support the enemies of right. Israel. Right. And they do the same thing with gangs in general. <laughs> yes. The Bloods and the Crips, they were flooding them with weapons so mm. they could kill each other. This mm. model is not new. That's what mm. we're saying. Mm. This is something that they copy and paste in every... <laughs> scenario they they have the same get up mm -hmm. right what we have to understand is we have to get be hostile to mm -hmm. the get up and we can't just sit by and just be like 
sharing stuff in our in our story like this it's not enough we have to we have our life has to align with the anger that this should invoke in you so we got biafra the second example of israel waging so-called israel waging mm -hmm. war against african liberation is their support for the apartheid government of south africa now this yeah. is very interesting because the apartheid government of south africa was populated by nazis literal people literal nazis who were supporting hitler during <laughs> the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. The Jews, after, you know, the foundation of Israel, they saw common cause with this apartheid government of South Africa because as one article put it, these were both white nations surrounded by darker peoples. You see? Mm -hmm. So they said in the same way the apartheid, the white Afrikaner, yeah. so called, the, mm -hmm. the Dutch, mm -hmm. the Rugus in South Africa needed weapons to exterminate the Zulu population in South right, Africa. Right. Israel, they said, we also need weapons to exterminate the Palestinian population in mm. Palestine. You see? And th there's even, there's an article, and I would highly recommend you all look this up. It's called Brothers in Arms. Brothers in Arms. Israel and South Africa. And Israel even claims that it was them who developed South Africa's military. I mean, South Africa wouldn't have had a military without Israel. Mm -hmm. Not only did Israel develop South Africa's military, they also developed their nuclear weapons program. That they claim that they, that they claim having. they don't have. South Africa was developed, <laughs> may have a nuclear weapons program, but it's under the control of whites. Israel also has a nuclear weapons program that was financed by, by South America. Africa and America. You see, so not only does Israel commit terrorist acts against Palestinians. But they do it while sitting on top of a nuclear weapon. Mm, that they claim they don't have. But everybody have wants to lives. destroy Israel, right? Everybody wants to destroy the country that has laid siege to another nation of people mm. and then waves a nuclear weapon over mm. their heads. Mm -hmm. But they're the victim. You see? See the type of type of schizophrenia, schizophrenia. that they, they're yep. imposing on the American population because they know what? They know the American population isn't going to study. They know the American population is so overworked so over entertained, mm -hmm. so over stimulated, mm -hmm. so they have so much information overload mm -hmm. without any type of intuition they that they can't autistic. collectively autistic that mm -hmm. they can't sift through this. Yeah. But we sift it through and these are the conclusions we come into. Mm -hmm. So deception and misdirection is the essence of Yerugu. And this this means this is the Israeli phrase, the so called Israeli phrase when they says, um, Palestine was a land without a people for a people without, without a, land. a land again it matches america whenever when, when the, there was nobody here when we got here it was a wilderness that's what they say that's when the the, the whites came to america they say it was a wilderness it was a wilderness full of 500 nations 500 how do you nations. miss all 500 nations in this wilderness but again if you have an agenda if you're a pathological liar and you're a rapist and a sadist and a sadist then yes. it's easy a land without a people for a people without a land deception and misdirection Yerugu. typical Yerugu. this is why we talk about Yerugu constantly because mm. if you know a Yerugu is a sealy this is not surprising mm. this is just Mm. This is just what they do. Mm. And now we as black people have to figure out a way to get a, a, out of the presence of Yorugu. Mm. But if you don't want to look at Yorugu for who they are, you're going to be in the presence of them and you're going to suffer mm. with them. Mm. Mm. And the last point I want to make when it comes to the, the, the so-called Israeli history mm -hmm. is that settler colonialism engages in misdirection through the creation of gangs. Mm -hmm. Now we're using gangs. This is basically Hamas, for example. Right. Where did Hamas come from? Notice if you look at all the media, nobody's going to talk about that. Mm -hmm. Where did Hamas come from? Hamas was created by Israel and they and so-called Israel and the so-called Israelis created Hamas as an enemy of the PLO, mm -hmm. which was called the Palestine Liberation Organization, which was led by Yasser Arafat, who was, by the way, supported by people like Nelson Mandela, mm -hmm. who Israel also looked at as, as a, terrorist a terrorist because he supported the terrorists. Palestinians. You see, it don't, it don't require much for you to be a, considered a terrorist. You see, you see, Mandela's a terrorist. How are you going to terrorize gonna, people when you're in jail? He's in prison. He's in jail 27 years, but he's a terrorist. He's a terrorist. What well, makes him a terrorist? He got melanin. Yeah, everybody with melanin is a terrorist in the eyes of you're the so-called Israelis. Right. Okay, so is a so-called Israel creates Hamas as a enemy of the PLO mm -hmm. because that's colonial. That's something they learned from the British, right. divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. How do I create another faction to overthrow the more legitimate and popular faction. And here's the thing, they were successful mm -hmm. in a way. So Hamas and Israel and, and other groups as well, America was able really? to yeah, was able to destroy 
was able to destroy the Palestine Liberation Organization. Now, mm -hmm. this is what they did not anticipate. They didn't anticipate that after they created Hamas and they, after the PLO was dissolved, mm -hmm. then Hamas would turn their guns around and shoot it at them. Right. And Think this, of bin Laden. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Same thing. America created bin Laden and then bin Laden flipped the gun and they killed and, him. And, and they killed him. So now you see how Israel created the problem that they're now so invested in solving. In solving. It seems like the problem isn't Hamas. Mm -hmm. It seems like the problem is Israel. Mm -hmm. And the problem is the occupation. Mm -hmm. And the problem is a colonialist mind state right. that creates these organizations only to create justifications mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. bomb and massacre and genocide mm -hmm. innocent children. Because mm -hmm. again, more than 50% of Gaza children. is children. Mm -hmm. This is a war against children. Mm -hmm. And all these Christians and pastors mm -hmm. and all these you know, um, so-called people who are on the side of God understand you're endorsing the murder of children. And what Hamas did was justified. Mm -hmm. And if you don't think it was justified, I want you now to disown the Haitian revolutionaries mm -hmm. who overthrew the French. Mm -hmm. I want you to um, disown the Mau Mau. I want you to disown Nat, Nat Turner. Turner. I want you to disown every rebellion mm -hmm. because in each of those rebellions, they weren't just killing the slave masters. Mm -hmm. They were killing their children. Mm -hmm. They was killing their wives. And they was killing everybody else. Mm -hmm. When we look at that, we don't say, oh, how horrific and immoral and savage mm -hmm. Nat Turner is. No, we say slavery mm -hmm. created that and slavery should have Justified. ended and Nat Turner wouldn't have to do that if, if he, he was liberated from slavery. If he was in Same Africa. thing today. If you end the occupation, Palestinians ain't going to have no reason no. to shoot at Jews. No. But if they partying on land mm -hmm. that, that they, they stole. kick them off mm -hmm. while they're starving them, mm -hmm. or as they put it, putting them on a diet to control their calorie intake. Putting them on a diet. Putting them on a diet. They got checkpoints. They can't even freely be, go where they want to go. It's people in Gaza who are in cancer wards that are about to die because they don't have electricity. They can't get chemo. Okay? Okay? So that's, that's the type of savagery that Hamas you know, the scary Hamas fighters who have the lunacy to shoot at people who are oppressing them. How crazy of How them. crazy of them. Why would they shoot them? They were only genociding them for about 50 Why plus years. Why didn't they years. just let them finish the genocide? Why didn't they let them finish dancing on their land before they went over the gate and started shooting them? Psychopaths. Psychopaths. And anybody that's like, I have to, I need more information. I'm kind of on the fence. I don't know who to... Psychopath. Mm. Psychopath. Because it don't take much. You don't even really need to know all of this history. All you need to know is white people doing it. We, we already know their history. So how do you show, tr show true, true solidarity? How do you show true you solidarity? Show true solidarity. Okay. With the Palestinian people and people worldwide who are being oppressed by Yorugu, white women, and white men. So the first thing, we have to acknowledge that in Western or uh, white societies, Support for armed resistance is taboo mm -hmm. because it is mislabeled as terrorism. Right. Meaning whenever you see a Western person, a white person, a demelinated person utter the word terrorism, understand they're talking about armed resistance. Mm -hmm. They're talking about somebody who had the courage to shoot back. Okay? They, have they ever called Nazis terrorists? No, they never called That's them terrorists. That's crazy. Even though Nazis committed the genocide. That's no, Nazi, they were a military. In fact, we, we saw a documentary that showed that they was taking Nazis to department they was, stores. Yeah, they were. You know, they brought them to they America. Brought them to America they was using them to help them create their nuclear weapons. They invited the scientists because you mm -hmm. know those genius Nazis. You know, so, 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 so smart. You know, with their you know state of the art gas chambers. You see, like their state of the art torture mm -hmm. dens. Notice the kites don't even call mm -hmm. Germans terrorists. Terrorists. No, they don't call them terrorists. But the Palestinian. But the terrorists. Palestinian terrorists. 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 And Terrorists. And here's, here's, here's something about the word terrorism. If you're terrifying your enemy, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. I would prefer my enemies are terrified. Mm -hmm. I don't want them to be at peace. No. When that Why Turner, were you here in the first place? When that Turner was killing yes. people in Southampton, Virginia, I'm positive they were terrified. Absolutely. And that was a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. When John Jacques Dessalines was mm -hmm. killing the French, mm -hmm. I'm positive they were terrified. Beautiful thing. That was a beautiful thing. When the Mau Mau and Daydan Kamathi mm -hmm. was killing the British, mm -hmm. I'm sure they were terrified. Mm -hmm. And that was a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. So we should take pleasure in the fact that our enemies are, are terrified. terrified. Because we're mostly we're being terrified all the time. Mm -hmm. So why can't we terrify them? Mm -hmm. You see, there's an African proverb that says, when one hates you, you return their hate. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say you love them no. or you sympathize with no. them. You return their hate. You condemn them. That's a law of nature. Mm -hmm. Reciprocity, mm -hmm. rhythm, rhythm, balance. Right. Not not love your not hug your your enemy and love your enemy. No. 
That is the lingo of a depressed, schizophrenic person who will I love who will love somebody that has raped, murdered, pillaged, and stole from them for generations. I'll even take a, 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 a line from the Quran. I haven't read the whole Quran, but there's a line in there that says oppression is worse than killing. Mm. Oppression it's is worse, worse than, than killing. killing. Meaning, the, what Hamas did, that was killing. Mm. What Israel does is oppression. oppression. Meaning, they create the killers. Mm -hmm. And same thing with, with um, rape. Killing is better than rape. Yes. When you rape somebody, you're killing them spiritually. Mm. You mm. see? Mm. So they, they did both. They oppressed and they raped. Mm. And then they, they create pockets of these people who, who they raped. And now these people also become rapists. Because this mm. is another thing that they're talking about. When you rape on the, on the scale that Yorubu has, has raped, you are infusing into those genes of that baby a rapist gene. So now that baby grows up mm. and also rapes and you, you it's like you're copy and pasting your personality and that's what children are in general and this is why in africa we always wanted to know the genealogy mm -hmm. and the investigate, and, and investigate the bloodline, the bloodline mm -hmm. of the person who we were about to have a baby with mm -hmm. because if the man was an alcoholic we was like well we don't want to have a child with him because the child may be an alcoholic you mm -hmm. see and the same thing with rape when you rape you are creating a rapist gene, gene. Mm -hmm. and this is why semitic um Places, nations that have a huge Semitic population mm. have a lot of rape. Mm. They have a lot of crime. They have a lot of just chaos, disorder, disorder mm. oppression. Like and it's that's just a product of living in a place where there's a there's a group of people who have been created out of rape. Mm. Yes. So saying free Palestine is not enough no. if it is not followed by free Hamas. What free Hamas, Hamas did should be celebrated. What Hamas did should be celebrated. Mm -hmm. I didn't misspeak. What, what Hamas, Hamas did, did should, should be, be celebrated. celebrated. And why? Again, Palestinians elected Hamas. Mm -hmm. Okay? So mm -hmm. you can't say you support Palestinians, no. but I don't support who you chose in your election, mm -hmm. even though they're the only people who are shooting at the enemy. Yes. Because is there another group shooting at the enemy? No. In the, at the same level of Hamas? And they're and they the underdog, because they don't even have nearly the military capacity. Yes. And this is another point. The only way you can, uh, occupation can ever end is through violence. There's no only. peaceful end to the no. occupation. No. Never. Never. Even if you look at the British in Kenya, they like to hold up Jomo Kenyatta, but the Mau Mau freed Kenya. Mm -hmm. it, was jo it was the Mau Mau who created the, the environment for the British to come to Jomo Kenyatta and say, okay, now we negotiate post-colonialism. Um, mm -hmm. post, uh, post -colonialism. That terror that they felt yep. when they babies yes. and they wives yes. and they yes. lives was being taken yes. by the Mau Mau. Yes. That's what made them come and be like, mm. what did you say you needed again? Yes, yes. That's yes. what frees us. Look at Samora Michelle in Mozambique, mm. okay? Mozambique wouldn't be free if he didn't form that guerrilla army. Nah. So you have to understand. And part this goes for black people in America too. And if you have a disgust for violence, if you have a disgust for guerrilla armies, then you should also have a disgust for occupation. Mm -hmm. And you say, what can I do to end this occupation? Not a ceasefire. Mm -hmm. No, end no, the no, occupation. No, 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 no. End the occupation. No, 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 no. Not no ceasefire. And not just end the occupation, but punish the people who enforce the occupation. Because they're going to do it again That somewhere means else. criminal trials. That means Netanyahu is mm -hmm. getting hung. Mm -hmm. That means all these Israeli politicians who have calmly watch this genocide go on now y'all going on the scaffold and y'all mm -hmm. about to get executed yep. in the same and way saddam hussein yep. got executed put him up on a hill put him up on the hill hands on pipes and if and if you really want to get real joe biden can join him absolutely and obama and obama and, and bill, bill clinton and jimmy carter any living american president can there. join benjamin netanyahu on the put scaffold him up there. Put him drop up there. the hammer on him this, see, this is what it sounds like when you actually care mm. about Palestinians. When you actually and, care about your people. And you care about African people and you care about all victims of colonialism. Mm -hmm. Read Wretched of the Earth. Friends for now, he wasn't talking about diplomacy. Nah. He was talking about fighting, revolutionary violence. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when we see this, it should trigger something in us. It should make us think, do we really believe in revolutionary right. violence? Or do we only like it when it's hundreds of years ago? Mm. But when we have to look at it today, we just yeah, like, oh. Nobody supports the killing of innocent people. Right. Who said they was Both innocent? Both sides are doing bad. Who said they was innocent? Who said they were innocent? Both sides are doing so bad. So are you just innocent if you haven't personally killed a Palestinian? 
are because I think you're not innocent when you know you live in a mm -hmm. occupying yep. apartheid state mm -hmm. and you're just partying yep. and you're not trying to yep. do anything to end it. Kikes, white people in so-called Israel, mm -hmm. when they kill Palestinians, they go up to the top of the hill and sit and walk and eat popcorn. Instead of that's the S D E R O T instead of they went to the top of the mountain and stare out, got their lawn chairs, got their popcorn, and then watched the Israeli military bomb them from the sky. And celebrated. And cheered. And cheered. The death of children. Remember, more than half the population is children. These are the people who we like. None of our business. I can't pick a side. I don't How? Know. How? I need more information. How? Both sides are doing that. Collective autism. Sadism. All right. Next. Christians. Let's talk about the Christians. Okay. Let's talk about the Christians, Baba Jai. Christianity's position of I support God's side is evidence of a culture of sadism within the black community, black American community, mm -hmm. that excuses genocide as morally acceptable. These pastors, these church leaders, these voices, these congregations. These congregations that are just very silent and even pro Israel. And even pro. These people are stakeholders mm. in genocide. Mm. And, they're, and they're using religion to hide cover. the fact that they're sadists. Yes. They can't stand life. They don't know how to they don't know how to commune with life. And they use religion. They use Jesus to hide the fact. That they're constantly meditating and they're fearful of death. Mm. These are these are the people that are most afraid of death, Christian. Mm. Mm. This is why they meditate on the cross. Mm. This is why they demonize African spirituality. Because it's the polar opposite. The polar opposite. It's what? Fertility. You see? It's libations. You see, and I've it's seen ritual. It's divination. You see, all of that. That's like no. 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 Death. Death. Death, death to that. Yes to that. So religion is being used as a weapon to conceal the conflict between Africans and Yorubans. Mm -hmm. Right. Notice when a lot of times when you hear Christians talk about mm -hmm. historical enemies, they never mention the Romans. Hmm. And I think and that's interesting because the Romans were supposed to be the, the ones who, who killed, killed Jesus. Jesus, right? Now why don't they mention the Romans? Because they are the Romans. America is Rome today. Mm -hmm. Okay? America is Rome today. Meaning the culture of Rome that was imperialist, that was dominating everybody in die. the world, it didn't die. Mm -mm. It just took that spirit and transferred it to America. And this is why we have to pray for the death of white people. Yes. Because they're going to just continue creating Romes and Americas and Israels. and all. This is what they do. You see, they just have changed the name. Mm. Same model. This is why we have to pray for the death of them. Mm. So we, there's no distinction. Christians are the biggest contributors. Mm -hmm to the propaganda of kikes as the chosen people. Meaning this idea that white people, blue-eyed, blonde-haired white people from recessive. Central and Eastern Asia, recessive, recessive genetically, genetically recessive, that they're the chosen people, this is a propaganda mm -hmm. that Christians mm -hmm. have been instrumental in building. And they, the part of the way they build it is by telling their congregations that when they see just unambiguous savagery when they just see the type of killing that no other population this could do without criticism. In the Bible. They, they connect it to prophecy instead of their complicity. It's not prophecy. No. This is complicity. complicity. Meaning mm. this is your return on your investment. Mm. You see when you pay your taxes, mm. when you, you know, when you pay the sales tax, you know, when you, you know, you support these politicians, when you elect them to office, when you give this, there's a sense of legitimacy, like they aren't terrorists. Mm -hmm. All this is contributing to this outcome that you're seeing today. Mm -hmm. So again, saying free Palestine isn't enough. No. We have to figure out how do we separate, how do we divest mm -hmm. from the country that is doing the, the most. The, the, terrorists, real terrorists, the real terrorists, the real terrorists that are hiring the small terrorists mm -hmm. to commit genocide mm -hmm. against children. Mm -hmm. And then using that as a reason to be like, we have to, we have to kill them. Yeah. The yeah. playing victim is the most disgusting thing to watch somebody rape you and then tell you that you're they're the victim. So what are the takeaways? So the first takeaway is we must align our lives with the principles of anti-settler colonialism. Mm -hmm. So remember, settler colonialism, that's when you invade 
indigenous lands. Mm -hmm. You exterminate the indigenous population and you try to recreate it. Something new. Something new. You give mm -hmm. everything new names. Mm -hmm. You convert people to another religion. Mm -hmm. You make it like you start to um, genetically pollute them. Mm -hmm. the, the mulattoes Rape. start to come about. Rape. Mm -hmm. The semitism. Mm -hmm. So you have to divorce your life with the principles of um, uh, settler, settler colonialism, colonialism, which go hand in hand with semitism. Right. Those are the same things. Meaning if you're in America, you should be thinking about how do I get to a nation yes. where everybody is melanated like me, mm -hmm. where everybody is has an African origin mm -hmm. like me. Mm -hmm. That's but, how you show solidarity. That's how you show solidarity. With Palestine and other parts of the world who are going under oppression, who mm -hmm. are suffering through oppression. That's mm -hmm. how you show solidarity, mm -hmm. by divesting. From the culture. From the culture. Make it America. illegitimate. Yes. Make it illegitimate. That's the only way because calling senators and calling out with your, with your free Palestine signs at, at the White House, you cannot talk to a sadist about stopping genocide. It's probably going to make them go harder. Hello, I want to make a call. <laughs> and I would, I would love for you to... Oh, you want me to be on hold? Okay. There is no discussion. Mm. You cannot... Com you, there is nothing to talk about. Mm. Here's, here's, here's a, a key insight, psychological insight about sadists. Because remember, when we're talking about America's participation in this genocide, this is a textbook case of sadism. Yes. Nothing arouses a sadist more mm. than to see the person they're punishing beg for mercy. Nothing arouses a sadist more than the person they're punishing beg, beg for, mercy. for mercy. Protest is a beg for mercy. Mm. Calling the senator? And Hamas didn't come, call no, anybody. No, they Hamas, didn't, no. they picked up their weapons mm -hmm. and they saying, we're going to fight our way out of mm -hmm. this. That's the you only see, way. That's the only way. Okay. So when, when people in America do this, it's really a slap in the face yes. to the person, to the people who are actually suffering yes. under these oppressive mm -hmm. regimes, mm -hmm. these white kikes. Mm -hmm. This is a slap in their face. Mm -hmm. And I know we think that we're helping, but we're not because going out and, and post, having a sign and calling senators and demanding, we demand a ceasefire. <laughs> You yeah. think these people, these people have nuclear weapons. They created nuclear weapons. They rape and just, you think calling them is going to yeah. stop them from. You don't think the Palestinians have asked for them to stop shooting them? Like, you see? So, because essentially when you're doing, <laughs> what you're doing is you're saying, I know Palestinians, y'all don't know. Y'all picking, do picking up weapons and stuff and trying to kill I'll the enemy. I'll help you. You don't have to kill him. Let me just call him and see if he can have a little change of heart. He has no heart to change. Okay, there is no heart to change. As as if this is an accident, like oh dang it, they're killing the Palestinians. No, they. So and we have to compare. Look at what happened in Lebanon and Iran after the Hamas attacked Israel. So in America, what do you have? Free Palestine protests, ceasefire, right? Mm -hmm. What happened in Lebanon and Iran? The parliament. Remember, these are the privileged people in Iran in um, Lebanon. They all gathered together and on mm -hmm. one accord screamed, death, death to, to America, America, death to Israel. Mm -hmm. Death to America, death to Israel. Not conversation not, with America, not, not negotiation this. with America. Death to America, death to Israel. And unless we're on that accord, we don't really support Palestine. We don't really support. Death to America, death to Israel. And Hamas was right. Hamas was Continue, right. Hamas. I support you, Hamas. Not just saying I support you, Palestine, because... Remember, the Palestinian people elected Hamas. So we cannot support Hamas. You are not supporting Palestinians. Palestinian people. They're, they're one. They're one and the same. Yes. Just like you cannot say you're anti-Israel um, while supporting America. Yes. yes. Same people. Mm -hmm. Same people. So, two, for, let, learn to form critical friendships in physical space. Mm -hmm. Meaning a lot of this... Advocacy is happening online. And this is another thing I wrote about. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of what they call scholar activism. Right. So these are people like, and I used to participate in it as well, but it has we limits. We all did. We all did. Mm -hmm. So, but we have to understand that has limits. Mm -hmm. If we really want to make a change, we have to what make sacrifices and then put ourselves in physical environments with people who share our vision right. about what justice is. Right. Meaning we shouldn't be guessing what your friend's position is on this. Mm -hmm. It should be obvious. It should be obvious. And if you yeah. have somebody you know and they are in favor of Israel, mm -hmm. this is a person who is immoral. Mm -hmm. And you shouldn't be around them no. because they are sadists mm -hmm. and they don't care about children. Mm -hmm. they, they don't, don't care, care about, about you. They don't care, they about, don't care you. about themselves. They don't care about human life. No. So we have to be more critical in incorporating um, this kind of 
conscientiousness, mm -hmm. this, this desire to see justice mm -hmm. for oppressed people, mm -hmm. not just online, but in our everyday mm -hmm. life. It has to be a conversation that yeah. we're having. It shouldn't, yeah. ha it shouldn't take war. Yeah. You see, we talk about this. We talk every about Yorugu, we talk about Yorugu on these videos all the time. Yeah. You see, it, it, it doesn't take a war for us to, to have these discussions. It's too late. It's too late at Once that point. Once the war starts now, it's like you doing catch up. Right. So it's like, know? it's all these people coming out now talking about worldly things. And it's like, but the American people are, have the most limited worldview ever. <laughs> you see, insular worldview yeah. ever. Like yeah. they don't care about what's going on in other parts of the world mm. because they have this uh, fake reality yes so it's like and then now when there's war and you're made to talk about war you have these little slogans that are so just easy to do mm. just reshare it in your stories and just post this it's like that's too easy if it's mm. that easy it has no real value mm -hmm. and that's all we're saying real you really want to support and you really want to stand in solidarity your life changes mm. the way you look changes mm. the way you move every day changes your values change where you live changes some change has to happen we can't just say mm. free Palestine mm. and then go back and be like, uh, can I get a number four? Yeah. Please. Go to Walmart. Free Palestine, though. But I'm going to continue to fund, fund the industries that are pro-Israel. No, we can't do it. And if you want to know which industries in America are pro-Israel, it's all of all them. All of them. Home Depot, Walmart, Coca-Cola, Delta, Southwest, uh, Google, Google, Yahoo, Microsoft, Forever 21. Yahoo, Forever 21. Hot topic if they still exist. <laughs> Hot topic. I all don't even these, know if they still exist. All these corporations are pro Israel because all again, of, it's about money. The music, that music, music you listen all to, the record the label Kikes, executives, the Drakes, the, Do the Doja Cats, the Tracy Silversteins. And all you, the yeah, and if you doubt me, ask yourself how many celebrities, how many people in high places of power or entertainment have said something on behalf of Palestinians and then the next question is how long were they in that spotlight mm -hmm. or were they instantly blackballed okay so that's telling you something whoever you're not allowed to criticize that's your God that's what your God is that's your God so are you able to criticize Israel and if you can't that's your God mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. we only have one God okay and that's the God of Africa mm -hmm. okay we don't even call it God. No, Odo Dumare. Yeah, Odo Dumare, Odo mm -hmm. You know, like, uh, God isn't. No, um, it's not the state. same. It's not the Christian God. It isn't God. a fictional state. No, he's not right? on the cross, dying and destitute. A land stealing state. No. So, our last point is a point that we make in all our videos is uh, we must leave and divest from America. That's how we show the real solidarity. Yeah. Your life has to change. You make enemies. People don't like what you say. People get offended. But that's how you know you're saying something righteous. Mm. Because you're living, mind you, living in America is living in the land of sadists. Mm. So if sadists get mad what you're saying, you're doing something right. You yes, see? Yes. You're doing something right. You're living live in the land of terrorists. You live in the land of rapists. You live in the land of child traffickers mm. and, and child pedophiles. molesters and pedophiles. And just, that's where you live. So if those people start condemning you, I think you're doing something right yes and if you look and at you, any go ahead go ahead if you look at any poll on who are the greatest threats to world peace mm -hmm. it's always at the top is america yep. and right beneath america is israel, israel. okay same people the, and that's most of the world mm -hmm. meaning india mm -hmm. china all of africa mm -hmm. all of south america mm -hmm. all of central america mm -hmm. essentially the melanated regions of the world mm -hmm. we're all on one unanimous accord mm -hmm. that the biggest terrorist in the world is america and israel yep. so it's incumbent upon us yes. as fellow melanated people yes. even the ones in captivity mm -hmm. to leave those nations mm -hmm. and join their melanated brothers and sisters mm -hmm. to condemn america and israel otherwise we are supporting yes. israel yes. even when we say free palestine mm -hmm. where we live dictates what we support and that was played a huge role in why we left mm, because mm. we knew we knew too much and we said if we stay here we're endorsing everything that this country does worldwide everybody in sodom and gomorrah didn't support sodom there were some people who were but when, it was, but when it was destroyed everybody everybody died. went down because you're still there why are you still your there? Your presence supports it. And even it's crazy because Christians don't even understand this because even in the Bible, it talks about judging nations. They don't judge individuals. It judges nations, nations. 
So where you plant your feet, where you lay your head at night, where your children go to school, where you marry, where you where you live, all of the that is where you're buried. Where you're buried, yes. Mm. Where you give birth. Mm. That is what your solidarity is. Mm. That's who your allegiance lies with. Mm. And this is why it's hard to come to these conclusions for a lot of our people because they live in in the presence of these sadists. They full of fear. They full of fear. So they can't say stuff. They mute. Right. The truth is like stuck in their throat. Mm -hmm. It can't come out. Right. Even with us. If you look at our earlier videos when we first left America, it wasn't this type of energy. Subdued. It was subdued energy still because although we weren't in the America, we still had the remnants mm -hmm. of that fear. Mm -hmm. We still have the remnants mm -hmm. of that uh, that idea of tiptoeing. We ain't got that no more. That's gone. For what? For what? We surrounded by our people. That's our security. And we want that for all of our people because there's peace and there is wholeness in that mm. it's wholeness in that and that's how you show solidarity with with people who are oppressed worldwide is you change your life you leave the trickets you leave the so-called conveniences in america and you say i don't need none of that i want to align my life with people and nations that have the same value system as me and i don't want to support a mm. terrorist nation mm. because i then become a terrorist myself and when the judgment falls on this nation i don't want to be there mm -hmm. i don't, don't want to be there i don't want right. to die with these people mm -mm. Mm -mm. don't don't no. jo don't join me in with them i had nothing to do yeah i had nothing to do with that yeah so so i hope that this helped you us to have a better understanding of hamas why we should support hamas specifically mm -hmm. And why we should pray for the death of the people who are committing genocide mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. worldwide. Because mm -hmm. Palestine is just one example. This mm -hmm. is happening in Sudan. Mm -hmm. This is happening in Congo. Mm -hmm. This is happening Haiti. Mm -hmm. they, Haiti. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is what... This it's happening in Western Sahara. Right. Yeah. This, is, this is happening worldwide. Yeah. So yeah. what we have to understand is we have to create... We have to have a global perspective when there's no wars. Mm -hmm. Even but with the war, without the war, we should still be globally invested. Mm -hmm. And that is how we show solidarity mm -hmm. by being aware and by removing ourselves from places that do not align with what we believe morally is correct. Ashe. Ashe. Asante for joining. We will see you in our next video. Go ahead.